Hello and welcome to Young Minds Career Institute. Today I am going to talk about spermatogenesis. So in this video we will cover all the aspects and all the events involved in spermatogenesis. So just let me first put the heading here. So the heading is spermatogenesis. So let me first describe you the meaning of spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis means it is the process of formation of spermatozoa, simple spermatozoans or you can simply say sperms. So the process of the process of the process of formation formation of sperm sperm is called spermatogenesis spermatogenesis so let me tell you one interesting thing about spermatogenesis that the cells which are responsible for the formation of sperm is not itself present in the testes as you know the process of spermatogenesis takes place inside the testes even specifically i should tell you it is in seminiferous tubule so so the process of spermatogenesis occurs in testes okay so it occurs occurs in testes even in testes there are seminiferous tubules so in testes there are seminiferous seminiferous tubules i have already discussed about the alice of testes you can check my previous videos where i have discussed about the testes where i have already told you that within a testes there are two to three cells two to three cells these cells are called as seminiferous tubules so this seminiferous tubule can form the sperm okay so let me draw the structure of seminiferous tubule for you so that you can understand the process of spermatogenesis let's say it is a seminiferous tubule it is a single seminiferous tubule although it can be three or four in one compartment in one septular testes so i'm just drawing only one seminiferous tubule for you so within seminiferous tubule some cells are present that is called as primordial germ cells but the interesting thing is the cells which are responsible for the formation of sperm the cells which are responsible for the formation of sperm is not itself present on the seminiferous tubule so it is the structure of seminiferous tubule it is seminiferous tubule and the cells which are responsible for the formation of sperm is not itself present in the seminiferous tubule actually the germinal cells or you can say the the cells which will give rise to the sperm is present in extra embryonic mesoderm so the cells which will ultimately convert into sperm actually they originates from extra embryonic mesoderm and from extra embryonic mesoderm they migrates to yolk sac yolk sac and eventually it migrates to the seminiferous tubule so the cells which are going to form a sperm is not itself present in the seminiferous tubule actually it is present in extra embryonic mesoderm from extra embryonic mesoderm it migrates to yolk sac and eventually leads to the migration into the seminiferous tubule where these cells which migrates from yolk sac is called as primordial germ cells these are called primordial germ cells and these primordial germ cells are diploid 
these are diploid means 23 pairs of chromosomes are there means 2n is equals to 46 we have discussed that the cells which are responsible for the formation of sperm is not itself present in the somniferous tubule it migrates from the extra embryonic mesoderm okay so let me change the slide then we'll discuss the process of spermatogenesis so once the cell migrates into the somniferous tubule it is now called as primordial germ cells it is now called as primordial germ cells although the number of primordial germ cells are very less inside the somniferous tubule so what actually happens these primordial germ cell first increase its number by undergoing mitotic division so these primordial germ cells undergoes mitotic division so they form spermatogonia cells they form spermatogonia a cells okay these spermatogonia a cells again starts mitotic division mitotic division so these spermatogonia a cell again starts mitotic division because they just want to increase their number because you, as you know in the process of insemination millions of sperms are released so millions of sperms cannot be formed by a single spermatogonia cells so these spermatogonia cells increases their number so that they can increase their number to a significant amount so that millions of sperm can be formed so spermatogonia a cells again go undergoes mitotic division and again they form spermatogonia A cells okay again they form spermatogonia A cells as soon as the number of spermatogonia A cell increases to a significant amount then spermatogonia A cells converts into spermatogonia B cells again they go mitotic division again they go mitotic division and now they converts into a spermatogonia b cells and this is the cell which is going to form your sperm okay this spermatogonia b cell will convert into the sperm now this spermatogonia b cell starts growing in size okay so there is a growth so there is a growth in spermatogonia b cell and once the growth in spermatogonia b cell starts they will never go back to the spermatogonia b cells so after the growth spermatogonia b cell increases in size and convert into another cell called as primary primary spermato primary spermatocyte so the spermatogonia b cell undergoes the growth phase of growth and converts into spermatocytes so up to this from the primordial germ cell to the spermatocyte the whole structure is deployed the whole structure is deployed means that the 2n is equals to 46 means every cell has 46 chromosome up to the primary spermatocyte now because we know that in our gametes the chromosome number is reduced to half so our sperm has 23 chromosome only so for 23 chromosome only we must need a division which reduces the chromosome number okay so we need a reductional division and you know very well that the reductional division is meiosis division okay even if i need to be more specific then it is meiosis first so this primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis first these primary spermatocyte undergoes 
meiosis first division and because of this meiosis first division two two secondary spermatocyte two secondary spermatocyte is formed and these secondary spermatocyte has chromosome half than of the primary spermatocyte means it has only 23 chromosome and now this two secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis meiosis second as you know that meiosis completes in two phase meiosis first and meiosis second so once the meiosis first is complete two secondary spermatocyte is formed and now these secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis second and they form four and they form four cells these four cells are called as spermatids these four cells called as these four cells called as spermatids and these spermatids after getting nutrition from sertoli cells sertoli cells convert into four spermatozoans spermatozoans or sperm so it is the whole process of spermatogenesis so what we have discussed yet that the process of spermatogenesis starts in seminiferous tubule where a uh, some cells from extra embryonic mesoderm migrates to the cell to the seminiferous tubule where it starts div dividing by mitotic division and they form a spermatogonia a cell then spermatogonia b cell spermatogonia b cell undergoes growth and form primary spermatocyte and the primary spermatocyte undergoes the meiosis first division to form two secondary spermatocyte and these two secondary spermatocyte again undergoes meiosis second division to form four spermatids and from four spermatids they get nutrition from sertoli cell and after getting matured they form four spermatozoan okay or these four spermatozoans is also called as sperm so we have discussed this now let me tell you what are the hormonal actions during the spermatogenesis takes place what are the hormonal changes during the spermatogenesis takes place so let me first draw the seminiferous tubule so let's suppose it is a hollow structure and we are calling it as a seminiferous tubule inside seminiferous tubule some elongated cells are present these elongated cells are called as sertoli cells these elongated cells are called as sertoli cells and between sertoli cells here primordial germ cells or you can say spermatogonia cells are present these spermatogonia cells what will they do they will start they will start their mitotic division and they will form spermatid these spermatids migrate to the sertoli cells where they get nutrition and after the getting nutrition when once they get matured they are just released okay they are just get released and these released spermatids now they are called as spermatozoans or sperm so sertoli cells basically provide nutrition to the developing spermatid sertoli cells sertoli cell provides nutrition nutrition to the developing developing spermatid so this is the first function apart from providing nutrition they secrete three major hormones sertoli cells secretes three major hormones one is called anti mullerian anti mullerian hormone 
वन इज कॉल्ड एंड्रोजन बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन एंड अनदर वन इज कॉल्ड इनहेबिन सो दीज थ्री इम्पॉर्टेंट हॉर्मोन्स आर रिलीज बाय सर्टोली सेल्स दिस एंटी मोलेरियन हॉर्मोन एज द नेम सजेस्ट इट इज अगेंस्ट द मोलेरियन डक्ट सो एंटी मोलेरियन हॉर्मोन हेल्प्स इन रेगुलेशन ऑफ मोलेरियन डक्ट इन मेल्स सो दिस हॉर्मोन दिस हॉर्मोन हेल्प्स इन इन रेगुलेशन ऑफ रेगुलेशन ऑफ मोलेरियन डक्ट मोलेरियन डक्ट इन मेल्स and this mullerian duct will form seminal vesicle androgen binding protein androgen binding protein will increases the amount of androgen inside the seminiferous tubule so androgen binding protein it helps in increasing the amount of androgen inside the seminiferous tubule so inside the seminiferous tubule it will increase the amount of androgen or testosterone what inhibin does actually inhibin inhibits the production of sperm as the amount of production of sperm increases is inhibin provide negative feedback mechanism so that the the production of sperm can be stopped okay so it provide it provides negative feedback feedback and stops the production of production of sperm apart from this seminiferous tubule in between seminiferous tubule some cells are present these cells are called leddic cells these cells are called as leddic cells and these leddic cells secrete a group of male hormone called as androgen and this androgen is very much important for the formation of sperm so these androgen is shifted towards the seminiferous tubule where androgen binding protein binds with this androgen and increases the amount of androgen inside the seminiferous tubule so that the amount of sem androgen hormone inside the seminiferous tubule continuously increases because of which the rate of sperm formation increases so this is all about the spermatogenesis this is all about the spermatogenesis hope you will love this video if you love this video please hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video till then bye bye everyone